Dozi Shukden is a Buddha from the Buddhist tradition. He's a deity who has been prayed to and his teachings have been followed for up to 400 years. The Dalai Lama himself practiced this prayer and the teachings until the 1970s when he had either a change of faith or a change of heart and he himself personally decided not to follow this anymore. It's a very simple practice which Buddhist people follow in order to develop pure minds of love, compassion, wisdom and spiritual protection. Now the Dalai Lama had a change of faith and uh, not being satisfied with his own change of faith he decided to inflict this upon the Buddhist community in general internationally and this is the problem that we face at the moment because he is saying that people who follow this deity, Dozi Shugden, are no longer Buddhists. Why is he opposed to it? My understanding is that this is a fairly unusual practice, is that right? I would say it's definitely not an unusual practice, it's 400 years old. That's a pretty short length of time in Buddhist terms I suppose. No, not when you consider that the new tradition the Dalai Lama himself created is only about 15 years old. Mm. Am I right in thinking that Dorje Shugden is a somewhat malevolent emanation of the Buddha? Oh, absolutely not, no. He's a protector, and protector from the point of view of, as I say, his purpose is simply to encourage people to develop pure minds of love, compassion, wisdom, and spiritual protection. They're not malevolent. The practice is not harmful and it cannot have any harmful effects because that would be a complete contradiction to mm. the nature of the practice. As it's been explained to me, the background to this story is that the Dalai Lama over many years now has been trying to unify all the major strands of Tibetan Buddhism and that your group is really resisting his spiritual authority, and that the Dalai Lama has run up against the cult of Dorje Zhugden. It's a practice that he sees as an obstacle in the path to this greater unification of the various strands that he's trying to bring about. Um, not entirely correct, no. One, Dorje Zhugden practice is not cultic. Second, he's not running up against us. He himself is causing division within the Buddhist community because... His two reasons that he's publicly given for um, abandoning this practice is one, it causes his lifespan to shorten, and two, it interferes with Tibetan independence. Well, the guy is 72 years old, so it's obviously not very harmful to his lifespan, um, and it actually has no ability to harm anybody's lifespan, let alone the Dalai Lama's. And second, he's publicly said many times recently that he's not interested in Tibetan independence. So. If they're the two valid reasons he's given, then there's no valid reason left for abandoning the practice. But is it true that your group is a rejectionist group within the Galukpa tradition, a movement that rejects the spiritual authority of the Dalai Lama? No, that's not correct, because if the Dalai Lama would just allow people to have religious freedom, they'd be very happy to accept him. I think one gross misunderstanding in the West is that the Dalai Lama is perceived to be the Buddhist leader per se. He's not. If you go to Burma, Sri Lanka, and so forth, and ask those Buddhists who is their Buddhist leader, definitely they would not say the Dalai Lama. And even within Tibet, Tibetan Buddhism, the position of Dalai Lama has never had authority over the other three schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Only now, in this century, during the time of this 14th Dalai Lama, has such a proposed unification been proposed. Mm, that's why I raised the question. I mean, what the Dalai Lama's project has been over recent decades, he's been trying to unify all the major strands of Tibetan Buddhism under his authority. That's correct, isn't it? According to him, yes, but if you check with each of the other schools, actually this is not correct because each of the other three schools also is fighting um, an internal turmoil because the Dalai Lama is cutting off limbs of those branches also. The Karmapas, for example, they've been paralyzed for many years because the Dalai Lama is interfering with their tradition in the same way he's now trying to reorganize the Galukpa school. So this is as much to do with the authority of the Dalai Lama as it is to do with a simple prayer? I think the two become mixed because of the Dalai Lama's own agenda. As we all know, he has two hats. He has his political and he has his religious and it definitely seems that he's using both hats to accomplish one aim. And this is where a lot of the problems are stemming from. How many Buddhists around the world follow Dorje Shugden? 
There are actually millions of them internationally. And even within Tibet alone, over one third of the population relied upon the practice of Dorje Shukden. But your group, if I'm correct, your group has grown up in the West. Are you part of the New Kadampa tradition? No, we're the Western You're, Shukden Society. Right, and they're separate groups. They're completely separate. Right. Um, New Kadampa tradition is a registered company and charity. The Western Shukden Society is simply a group of Dorje Shukden practitioners who come together to be heard by the Dalai Lama because for 20 years individual practitioners have been writing letters, requesting audiences, sending faxes to the Dalai Lama, requesting him to explain his position and to basically allow religious freedom to prevail within the Buddhist community. And he's not even acknowledged such requests. So therefore we've decided together to unify and with one voice Ask him. Right. I have to say, I've read your letter on your website. It's a pretty tough, strident letter. It's really a letter of demand. I'm not surprised he hasn't answered it. Well, considering we've sent countless letters and petitions over a course of 20 years, we have no choice. We were forced into a corner, you know, especially when in January he initiated a referendum, which basically, if you follow his view, you receive an identity card which is your passport to human freedom within the Tibetan in exile community without it. And that means if you continue to practice Dorji Shugden, you're a victim to any number of atrocities. You're following him wherever he goes around the world on his travels, protesting. And this will be the first big protest of this kind in Australia. Mm -hmm. Correct. We started in America in April. We were in Germany with three demonstrations and three recently in the UK. And now, yes, we have some in Australia. And will these be peaceful protests? Absolutely. We have completely pure intention and motivation. Our intention is simply to protect one pure ancient lineage from being destroyed without valid reason. And our motivation is compassion. So there's no anger, there's no hostility. We're just looking for a peaceful resolution. Of course, we make noise, but without noise, we're not heard. And that's been proved over 20 years through the correspondence that he's ignored. Pema, given the political situation that the Dalai Lama is dealing with at present with the Chinese and the Tibetan situation, I have to ask you the question that most Australians are sure to be asking. Are you agents of the Chinese Communist Party or are you their dupes? <laughs> Absolutely not. You can check me out, do whatever you like. <laughs> I have got no connection with the Chinese at all. And I have to say too that this is just, again the propaganda of the Dalai Lama's camp because there's no valid reasons for claiming that. But surely it's nothing to do with propaganda to make the point that your protest at this extremely inauspicious time can only, surely it can only, undermine the Dalai Lama's authority and weaken the situation of the Tibetan people. The Chinese must be laughing their heads off. I don't know what the Chinese are doing, but I wouldn't say this is inauspicious when I'm witnessing people being denied medicine, people being denied education, being ostracized from their homes, being victimized and threatened simply because they want to maintain this prayer. They don't want to encourage other people to practice it. They just simply want to get on with their own spiritual life. And that's happening because of the Dalai Lama initiating, endorsing, and proactively campaigning for the abolishing of this practice. Where is this persecution that you're alleging? Where is it happening? It's happening right now as I speak in India, and even last week in Paris, the Dalai Lama's own sister was travelling around encouraging people to abandon this practice, and in America also. Kelsang Pema of the Western Shugden Society.